So obviously last week AEW presented a special edition of Dynamite on TNT. It was the first ever blood and guts match between the Inner Circle and the Pinnacle on the show. Certainly had a lot of people talking for a variety of reasons coming out of the show. Uh, one of which was Chris Jericho's fall off the top of the cage. The stunt that wasn't maybe shot in the best manner. The reaction on social media. The, the violence, the blood, the blood in the blood and guts. The obvious blading, the real over the top nature of all of the blood all that kind of stuff well we have a bit of a reaction from wwe and their feeling their perception or certainly wwe management uh, their perception on the blood and guts match last week on dynamite and it's fascinating it's absolutely fascinating now it's being reported this is a report initially it was first so i have to give them credit even though they do have a, a checkered history to say the least it was first reported by ringside news but it was later backed up by the likes of pw insider and dave mouser of the wrestling observer newsletter has gone with the same story so it does look like it is factually accurate uh, and the story is that wwe officials quote hated the inaugural blood and guts match on last week's aew dynamite as i mentioned this is a report from pw insider which was first reported by ringside news now the report notes that one person in WWE management told Dave Shearer uh, that the Blood and Guts match quotes this is such a great quote this is such a great quote the Blood and Guts match quotes set the business back 30 years now on the flip side of this and I guess this just shows the disconnect between those in power on the management and WWE official side and those in terms of being the actual talents inside of the ring Several active WWE superstars that Shearer spoke to said that they loved the match since, quote, they would love to do something like that themselves. Now, there were no major injuries coming out of the Blood and Guts match. Uh, the 10 wrestlers involved did suffer a lot of bumps and bruises and cuts. Sammy Guevara of the Inner Circle posted a graphic photo showing several nasty scars and welts, and Cash Wheeler tweeted a photo of his bloodied gear. Now, an earlier report by PW Inside note, uh, Insider noted that there was far more blood in the match than originally intended, but I guess due to the adrenaline and the live nature of it, more people uh, bled more than was originally intended. Now, of course, the conclusion to the Blood and Guts match was a major talking point among fans after MGF pushed Chris Jericho off the top of the cage. The camera Work exposed the cardboard covered crash pad below the stage where Jericho landed. Now, I'm not going to talk more about the finish of the match and the, the way that it should have been shot and the production issues with that. It's obvious at this point. And I think despite the, the outrage on social media and despite the infighting, which at, at times... I mean, it was embarrassing, but at times it was comical, to be honest. The the infighting between fans on social media, talking about the Jericho spot. I think everyone's kind of in agreement at this point that whilst, uh, despite what people, uh, their intentions and all that kind of stuff, I think what everyone can agree on at this point is that the camera work was sloppy. It could have been executed far, far better. And maybe it should have been executed far better. We can all agree on that. And I think everyone agrees on that at that point. The story I do want to talk about, though, is the WWE reaction to it, because I think it's hysterical. I, I, I really do think it's hysterical. It's one of those moments that, first of all, for this to be a story, what, WWE management are going to talk to sources of various outlets that they love the Blood and Guts match? Of course they're not. At the end of the day, WWE and AEW are still competition, so it benefits WWE to come out and say that they didn't like the match. The irony being, the name of this match, the name of the Blood and Guts match, is a Vince McMahon term for AEW. So, of course, he wouldn't like it. I just, I think it's ironic, and we don't know if this is Vince McMahon's opinion. We must say i don't know if it's vince mcmahon's opinion that he didn't like the match or anything like that but the reason it's called a blood and guts match is because of vince mcmahon himself in 2019 or early 2020 i forget when it was so much time has passed since then vince mcmahon on an investor's call or one of those quarterly earnings call he's asked about aew and says you know are they competition are you threatened by them what do you think and he describes them as a blood and guts kind of promotion he goes they're doing the blood and guts thing so the irony that Vince McMahon or the people that work for him, his minions, his yes men, don't like the match because it was too gratuitously violent and it was too had too much blood and it set the business back 30 years. What does that even mean? It set the business back 30 years. Maybe, maybe some people want to get it back to what it used to be 20 or 30 years ago. The 1990s 
are some of the most revered times, certainly the late 1990s are the most revered times in pro wrestling history. It's the most popular time in the history of professional wrestling. And those in WWE are criticizing them uh, for trying to get it back to when wrestling was at its most popular, really. It's just, it's just, it's just typical. It's typical. And I think, to be honest, this story does nothing for WWE. This story, I think they've, they've spoken to these sources and they've spoken to these outlets and these journalists hoping that this would reflect badly on AEW and AEW would take the heat here and that people would jump on it and say, yeah, it was way too much violence and there was too much blood and I didn't like it and all that kind of stuff. In reality, it's just the opposite. I think people, when they read this story and they see that these WWE management and officials hated the match, they look at them and go, that's what's wrong with WWE right now. They are so disconnected from what the fans actually want. They are so disconnected from what pro wrestling fans want to see in their product or a product that they like to watch in 2021. They look at that and they go, oh, it's so barbaric, it's so old school. Well, I don't know about you, I might be wrong here. But if what we're seeing today on WWE television is new school, then I would much prefer it to go back to the old school because the new school really isn't working for me at the moment. It really isn't working for me at the moment. So I just, I find it laughable. I find it so laughable and it's so eye-rolling. Of course WWE would hate what they saw Wednesday night on Dynamite. They certainly hated it when Dynamite was beating NXT in the ratings and in the viewership most Wednesday nights as well. For me, did it have too much blood in it? Maybe, maybe in certain spots where I don't think everyone in the match needed to get colour. I don't think everyone did, but there was certainly a, a, a phase in the match where everyone that went into the match suddenly, they were in there for five minutes and wouldn't you know it, they suddenly had, they were suddenly bleeding and they suddenly had color that felt a little bit gratuitous but what they were going for was the war games feel when a lot of people would get into their match and they would start to bleed because it's a violent match it's a really violent match and wwe to say that it set the business back 30 years wwe i mean they act like they've been pg forever they've been pg since 2008 something like that around 2008 that they forget that through the early 2000s and the late 90s, they were blading all the time in some of the most vicious matches of all time. Mick Foley made a career of it in WWE, and he was still doing that in the mid-2000s. Talking about matches, they just did a documentary on the WWE Network celebrating the hardcore match between Edge and Mick Foley at WrestleMania because it's one of the best WrestleMania matches of all time. It's one of my favorite matches of all time. Mick Foley, Edge, hardcore match, WrestleMania 22 in Chicago, Illinois. It's fantastic. It's brilliant. But they act like that. That's That wasn't 30 years ago. That was in the mid-2000s. I know it was a while ago. It's like, what, 15 years ago or something like that. Still, it's a fantastic match and it's celebrated by WWE today. And it's not exactly the same as the Blood and Guts match. If anything, it was far more violent than the Blood and Guts match. They dove through fire and had thumbtacks and all that kind of stuff and had even Lita get color in that match. A woman, uh, especially in the mid-2000s, that was craziness. So to say that the, the match on Wednesday set the business back 30 years, I would say to those WWE management and those official, why don't you actually watch some of the product on your own network from maybe 15 years ago or 20 years ago? Then you would realize that Wednesday was nothing. Wednesday was nothing until terms of violence and don't get me wrong I'm not advocating for people to bleed all the time on television or anything like that I've been critical of Cody Rhodes getting color in his matches far too often but violence at the right time blood at the right time tells a story it enhances a story and surely surely those people in WWE that felt that it set the business back 30 years or this and that they can't be pro wrestling people they can't be pro wrestling people because if they would if they knew the history of the business uh, then they would realize that Wednesday's match was nothing in comparison to some of the matches that WWE have done or any promotions have done throughout the years. I thought I think it's ridiculous. I think it's absolutely ridiculous, and it just shows how out of touch some of the people in WWE are today. I think it's I think it's ridiculous. Anyway, we do have some other things I want to talk about. Is the return to touring by AEW because AEW today have announced a return to touring, uh, a return to live touring with upcoming AEW Dynamite tapings on the road starting in July. Now AEW will run Dynamite on July seven from the James L. Knight Center in Miami, Florida. July fourteen from the HEB Center in Cedar Park, Texas. 
and July 21 at the Curtis Caldwell Center in Garland, Texas too. Now tickets for all three Dynamite shows will go on sale this Friday, May 14, and will start at $30. Each event will be held in compliance with COVID-19 protocols. AEW has also announced two rescheduled live event dates for St. Louis, Missouri and New Orleans, Louisiana. The June 23 taping at Shy Feats Arena in St. Louis will now take place on Friday, November 5th, and will be a TV taping to air on TNT, but apparently not as a dynamite show that is interesting because that might be the beginning of the new tnt show we'll have to wait and see about that the event scheduled for the uh, uno lakefront arena in new orleans will now take place on wednesday january 12 2022 and will be a dynamite taping this is what tony khan has had to say the amount of titles tony khan has by the way AEW president ceo general manager and head of creative my oh my talk about hats that tony khan is wearing he said quote we are so appreciative of our fans in jacksonville who have been with us these past nine months their support and incredible energy have lifted us week after week and viewers have fed off their enthusiasm and support daily's place will always be our home looking ahead we're thrilled to welcome our fans back to become part of the action in miami austin and dallas we've missed touring cities meeting the fans and hearing their roar during our live shows please be assured we're working closely with the venues to comply with state and local regulations in each city miami austin and dallas are the first of many as we gear up the trucks to travel around the country again so obviously stay tuned because we if obviously when more dates get announced we'll talk about them here on the channel it's the next phase it's the next phase uh, when it comes to any of this and, and this has really been my stance when it comes to fans returning in any form whether it's wwe aew impact whatever uh, my my concern and i think the most paramount concern of any of this should be the safety of those attending if it's safe for fans to attend i don't necessarily have a problem with it again i would still prefer that they are socially distanced or there is a reduced capacity or there is a mask mandate or something like that or a covid testing scheme to get into the arena i don't know how it would work Obviously, though, it's the next phase. We are getting closer and closer to fans returning on a regular basis. AEW have had fans in attendance for a while now. And we do have a story about um, ticket sales and stuff like that because this kind of feeds in nicely. So we'll touch on this in a second. But AEW have had fans in attendance for their shows, gosh, since the end of last year. And they're certainly, they have been ramping up. Tony Khan announced that double or nothing uh, at the end of this month will be a, a complete capacity, 100% capacity in Daly's place. So they're ramping up. They certainly feel that they can do it safely. And if they can do it safely, then I don't have a problem with it. As long as it's safe to do so. Again, I don't know how they figure out how it's safe to do so. Certainly, again, and I don't know, I'm not an expert on this because obviously I'm not in the United States of America. As far as I am aware, is that obviously certain states are opening up at different times. Uh, Miami, sorry, Florida and Texas are those states that are opening up uh, quicker than others. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But this is the beginning. This certainly is the beginning. And I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the year, uh, AEW and WWE for that matter are, are back touring full time with fans in attendance in, in maybe not a full capacity, but certainly in a limited capacity at the very least. We've had all of this talk as well about WWE and when will fans be returning to their program. Of course, they've got a residency at the Youngling Center in Tampa Bay, Florida. That lasts until August. August, the, the thought process and feeling within WWE that SummerSlam would take place in a stadium in August had, would have live fans in attendance and would be the restart to WWE touring as well. So AEW announcing that they're going to begin touring in July says to me that this report of WWE returning to touring and having live fans in attendance for every show in August sounds about right. Now, will WWE change their mind when it comes to AEW now getting jumping the gun, if you will, and getting their the touring uh, the touring feeling early i don't know i don't know i don't know if w would look at that and say maybe we should start touring in july as well ultimately what it will come down to to wwe is money that's what it will come down to if wwe thinks there's a demand there and they think they can make money then maybe they will do it early i'm sure they will have an out clause in their contract with the youngling center for me, I feel like it will. they'll just wait it out until SummerSlam. I think they'll wait it out until SummerSlam. They'll use SummerSlam as a launching pad to return to touring uh, and having fans in, uh, in the arenas for all of their different shows for SmackDown Raws. Again, what that touring will look like, I think the benefit they might have by waiting until August is possibly some more states might be opening. So... We'll have to wait and see on that. But it's great news for the programming, obviously, with Blood and Guts. We spoke about Blood and Guts uh, earlier. Certainly what made that main event feel really great was the crowd participation, was the crowd reaction. That crowd was red hot for that show. Uh, obviously, they saw the first half of it on the big screens because it was taped. But for the match they saw live, 
that blood and guts match they were so into it and it was fantastic it really was so to have that back on a regular basis every single week is what all wrestling fans want it's what we all want isn't it so i'm very excited and certainly is going to make those shows in july feel like a massive deal for aew as well now speaking of dynamite tapings and ticket sales i did want to talk about this because as i mentioned it does feed into quite nicely the announcement about today about the return to touring for aew because uh, by all accounts the tickets for aew dynamite have been necessarily going at a rapid pace not that that's much of a surprise considering the pandemic but aw president and ceo and general manager and head of creative got to get those titles in pal tony khan revealed that double or nothing will run at full capacity and will also feature other weekend events as well that week's dynamites is scheduled to air at 10 p.m on friday though not wednesday on tnt due to the nba playoffs now on the latest edition of wrestling observer radio dave mountain noted that this week's show that will be held in front of a live crowd is currently not selling well. Now, while the show features several big matches like John Moxley versus Yuji Nagata for the IWGP United States Heavyweights Championship and Miro versus Darby Allen for the TNT Championship, it was noted that fans most likely are more eager to attend the bigger shows like last week's Blood and Guts and next week's Double or Nothing as opposed to Dynamite this week. Now, it was also reported that last week's Blood and Guts show was expected to have 2,500 fans in attendance, but it ended up drawing roughly around 1,600 fans in instead as for the friday dynamite that is expected to be a four hour event with dark elevation expected to be taped in front of a live crowd for the first time in the show's history there is also a planned saturday fan fest event as well i think this is a fascinating story i think it's an absolutely fascinating story and i don't think uh, i do think rather AEW should be held to the same standards as WWE or Impact back in the day. I'm not saying that AEW or anyone should be criticized for low ticket sales. We are in a pandemic and you do have to judge them against that curve. But it's it's fascinating. It really is fascinating that I kept saying during the Blood and Guts watch along last week and every time I spoke about it that how excited I was to see that many fans in attendance and to see how it would work and to feel the reaction of the crowd. And I just mentioned a minute ago that I, I really enjoyed the main event because of the energy that the crowd provided. It felt like there was 2,500 fans in attendance. So the fact that 900 fans weren't there because they couldn't sell all the tickets, I think is interesting. Now, WWE, uh, AEW rather, would they be looking at that when it comes to the tour, when the returns to touring in July, will they be looking at that going, look, we're struggling to sell them in Jacksonville and that's kind of our home base. Maybe their thought process is, look, we can't run Jacksonville every single week anymore because just frankly, the crowds are getting and the fans that are living in the local area are kind of getting tired of it. We need to branch out and we need to go to these different states that are opening up. Maybe that's the kind of the, the, the shove in the direction, if you will, for AEW to return to live touring. I think it's interesting. I was surprised because when they ran through the card for this week's show, for me, it was a far better card, or it looks to be a far better card than last week's Blood and Guts. Obviously, yes, you have the Blood and Guts main event, which is a spectacle, which is why people would want to attend that show. But to be honest, if you're going to put it on paper, I think this week's show is far, far better. You've got TNT Championship match. You've got, obviously, the number one contenders match between Pac and Orange Cassidy. You've got the uh, IWGP United States Championship match. You've got Cody Rhodes making an announcement for what he's doing at Double or Nothing as well. You've got the fallout of Blood and Guts. There is so much going on. Uh, this week on Dynamo, it's a really, really, really strong show. And I'm, again, I'm, I'm surprised that maybe uh, the tickets aren't selling so well. My only rationale for that is, one, obviously we're in a pandemic, but two, I think the most likely cause is the fans in that local Jacksonville area, the Florida area, they're just a bit tired. They're just a bit tired of, you can only go so many weeks when it's in your area. That's the whole point of touring, isn't it? Is that you need to go to all of these different areas. You need to touch all of these different markets because you can't stay in the same market forever because they'll just grow tired of you. And again, maybe is that the shove in the direction for AEW when they've realized, look, states are starting to open up and the tickets aren't selling as well as maybe they once were in Jacksonville. We need to go somewhere else. Maybe that's the case. Maybe that's the case. Um, as far as Double or Nothing, I have no doubts Double or Nothing will probably sell out. I think we're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of traction on social media that a lot of people, even that aren't based in Florida, are going to go to that event. Whether that's a good thing or not, people traveling from all over the United States coming to it. 
that's another point of contention. We'll have to wait and see. But Double or Nothing's the big event, isn't it? And that's the one everyone's excited about. And I, I have no doubts that will be a sellout. And the crowd, obviously, is going to be red hot for that. And it's going to be a big moment. There's no doubt about that. So it's surprising about the Dynamite tickets. And maybe, as I mentioned, maybe that's the reason that they've decided that today's the day to announce their return to touring on the road. Nevertheless, as always, guys, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on all of the AEW news stories we've spoken about today? WWE management hating the Blood and Guts match. Obviously, AEW's return to touring as well. And uh, the Dynamite tickets reportedly not selling too great. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys talking about AEW, WWE, Impact Wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community, drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Got the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestling News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.